Hello everybody, today another piece of car chat with me, JM, and this week we're discussing a truly iconic vehicle, or more accurately, its successor. Iconic is not a word that I bandy around lightly at all. Oh no, I created a mini-series a few years ago of what I term iconic vehicles. To date, I think there are two or three cars in that playlist because there are so very few vehicles that I deem worthy of wearing that description. Things like the Model T Ford, the Volkswagen Beetle, and probably the Golf, those are the kind of cars that you need to be in order to be in that playlist. Now, the original Land Rover Defender, or the Land Rover, that is genuinely an icon. It's a brilliant piece of engineering. It's an artistic icon. It's an absolutely fabulous vehicle that means so many things to so many different people. And that is really, for me, part of being an iconic vehicle. Versatility, appeal to the masses is very important. There are many great Ferraris out there, but so very few of them are iconic to people that are not petrol heads. And that is the difference. The Land Rover, and we shall call it the Defender for the sake of argument, has been around for a very long time, but a number of years ago, JLR had to stop making it. The mighty, iconic Defender had to stop production. I'm sure that if there was any way around it, JLR would have just kept making the things until Kingdom Come. But ever-tightening emissions, and crash regulations, and various other things came for it. It just had to stop. Now, allegedly, JLR in the past have tried many times to replace the Defender, but it's just never happened. I guess in the same way that Porsche tried to kill off the 911, the difference being that the 911 evolved quite dramatically over its own lifespan, but the Defender in many ways didn't really. I've noted that the Defender fans will argue that the later cars are very different to early ones, and I'm pretty sure the Defender world's probably a, a cliquey little one with people arguing as to what the best Defender is, what constitutes a true Defender, and all that sort of stuff, and that's part of what makes these things absolutely amazing and fascinating. But a lot of people have asked me what I think of the new Defender. The truth is that I haven't driven one, I still have not. The unfortunate events happening worldwide at the moment, I think, have totally scuppered JLR plans, and that is very unfortunate because I think the new Defender is a work of utter genius. All of the diehard, hardcore Defender fans that I know hate it. They absolutely loathe it. And that's brilliant. That's fantastic. And the reason for that is that they were always going to. The problem with replacing iconic cars like this is that these vehicles build a fan base. They have this dedicated legion of followers. And the simple fact is that those kind of people will just see past any sort of defect or issue that their beloved vehicle has. They don't care. Just look at the tens of thousands of pounds, if not more, that people spend on modifying, improving examples of these old cars. If they were that happy with the standard thing, they'd just leave it alone, but they seldom do. The Defender is popular in part because you can muck around with it so much, you can do whatever you want. It wasn't a particularly expensive car to get into. They also held their money very well. You could do a lot with them. You could take them adventuring, you could take them around the farm. I live in the countryside. Everyone around here on a farm has at least one Defender. At least one. It's a, it's a British thing. A really properly British thing. A lot of people that I know that live abroad wouldn't go near one with a barge pole. They would instead have a Toyota Hilux or a Land Cruiser. Something like that. I mean, let's face it, I don't see the Taliban using Defenders. Maybe that's for the best, because that wouldn't really be a very good advert for them if James Bond was supposed to have one. So why is it that I think the new one is so great if everyone that loves the old one hates it? Well, they were always going to hate it. The fact is that unless JLR kept on building the exact same old Defender, people would not like the new one. There is no way, no way at all you can make a new version of an iconic car and have everyone love it. Just doesn't work. Look at the Beetle. I mean, crikey, look at successive versions of the Golf. Sure, people like them, they're great cars, no argument there, but the people that love the early ones will still tell you that a Mark 1 GTI is far better than a Mark 7.5 R. 
there are some ways that I would agree with those people. But of course, the march of progress means that we just can't keep making the same old car forevermore. Just won't happen. The truth as well is that the Defender was bought by a lot of people that really, really shouldn't have got one. My dad owned one for a little bit. I drove it and the Defender has the honour of being one of the few cars that I truly, genuinely hate. It is an awful thing to drive. It is horrible. It is noisy. It is unrefined. It has no power. It breaks. It feels brittle. It can't turn. Horrible. Absolutely awful vehicle. If I never drive one ever again, it will be too soon. But it had its fans, it looked pretty badass, and it was relatively cheap. The new one is very different. It's got some styling cues from the early one, but it's a very, very different looking thing. And so it should be, because it's got to represent a huge leap forward. It's also a lot more expensive. Starts at just over £40,000. And if you want the new straight six that Jag have got for it, which it probably wants being 2.3 tonnes, you've got to fork out 80,000 quid for the Defender X. And I can already hear all of the fanboys and girls of the original car crying out saying it's too much, it's crazy, who can afford that, that's not a proper Defender. Fine. You would have said that if they were 50 quid. That is the truth of it. Now, Land Rover could have been lazy. They could have been really, really lazy because they could have called anything a Defender. And, and in fairness, if they had gone and called the new Defender the Discovery Utility, or the Discovery Adventure, I don't think any of us would have noticed. And that is truly the power of a name, because launching a new Defender, that's a big thing. That's a, that's a bold statement. And Land Rover wanted to make sure that everybody knew this was a serious car, because you got all these people moaning, oh, it's not body on frame construction, it's got all this fancy air suspension, all this complicated stuff about it, it's big, it's heavy, you know, it's gonna break, all this stuff. So all the reviews I've seen so far are from Namibia. Carfection did an amazing uh, review of that. Henry Catchpole is a, is a brilliant journalist anyway, but really good video, and everyone seems to love it. That's done some pretty hardcore off-roading, stuff that friends of mine tell me is not easy stuff at all, and so it would appear that the car is extremely capable. But let's be perfectly honest here. The majority of defenders are going to live on the mean streets of Kensington. Uh, they're also going to be around here, I'm sure, but they're probably going to be owned by the people that own the farms rather than the people that work on the farms, because the people that work on the farm have already got their defender. The people that own the farm probably want something to go alongside their Range Rover, which is the car that people should have been buying instead, but they just didn't. And so, the new Defender, I think they sent it to Namibia to launch it for the same reason that Bugatti made a Chiron that could do 300 mile an hour. No owners are actually going to do 300 mile an hour in their Chiron, but I'm sure most of them bought it knowing that it could, and maybe that was part of the purchasing decision. In the same way that a lot of people buying a Defender want to know that this car could take them on the meanest toughest trails known to man and it will be absolutely rock solid because that is the sort of thing that you're going to need to know if the most brutal piece of terrain near you is the duck pond. That's just the way that people work and, and that's fine. It means that this car has been properly engineered, properly thought through and hopefully it's going to be another step in JLR shaking off this unfortunate reputation that they have. I think it's probably too expensive for a lot of people. Maybe that's a good thing, who knows? I'll be interested to see what specs of these cars people actually wind up buying, whether it's the, the entry level trims, whether it's the more advanced trims. I'm also keen to see whether Land Rover start to allow you to personalize it more because I looked at the configurator and at the moment it seems like you just kind of choose your trim and then it's all set, including color and everything. So that doesn't really seem to take in the sort of ethos that people have with this customization of the car. So I'm hoping that's gonna all sort of grow up and expand because it really needs to, but for the time being, I think JLR was so, so smart launching this because this is going to drive a hundred times better than the old car. I've no doubt whatsoever it's far closer to a Discovery or a Range Rover in terms of drive than the old Defender was 
at all. And that can only be a good thing because for the majority of people that are gonna buy the new one, that was the right thing to do. They got the badge they want, they can spec all the adventure and travel packs if they like, but they aren't taking that thing off-road. Very, very few people will. But the good news is that JLR are also the sort of company that are very, very happy. In fact, they make a big point of it, of supporting all the people that own the old one. So with the new car, they really are pleasing everyone. People are going to moan about the new one, but those are the people that have already got the old one. So I think it was the right thing to do. What do you guys think? Is the new Defender a, a, a good idea or not? Have you ordered one? I'd love to know if you have and, and see why you bought it. Were you thinking of ordering one? Have you cancelled your order? Do you own the old one and you actually do like the new one? Please, everybody tell me. Thanks for listening. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.